When will the next bull run start? How is the short term price action looking? Are we going to see a monthly candle close above 30,000 or are we in tune for a strong rejection? These are a couple questions we'll be answering in today's video, so stick around to the end. Let's get into it. Okay guys, I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. We're here to discuss Bitcoin, focusing on the macro charts, talking about the four year cycle, the bull run, and when we assume it is going to start based on historical data. We'll also take a look at the short term price action, discuss the possibility for a rejection or breakthrough at 30,000, and of course, all of the market data. Before we get into it, smash the like button, hit the comment button, subscribe to the channel guys, we do daily videos for Bitcoin, focusing on the structures, the data, the technicals, and the facts. No emotion, no hype, no bullshit, pure raw data. You can also join us on Telegram, the second link down below in the pinned comments, you'll get access to charts, videos, updates, news events, information, economic data, so much more, educational posts, all of our stuff in here, guys, is incredibly, incredibly beneficial and it'll help you navigate the intricacies of the market and keep you up to date. If you are interested in joining our Telegram channel, which is our VIP channel, you get access to our main Telegram chat and of course, our main VIP group chat, two channels at a price of one, guys. You'll get access to everything that is detailed in here. This is our VIP over here. You can see specific entries, targets, stop losses, etc. And of course, our group chat, where you've got access to four sub chats where you can post all questions. You can look at trading charts and examples. And of course, our general chat. More information in there. Let's get into a video, guys. Starting off with the market data. How are we looking with just over, well, just under 24 hours now remaining for March? We're up 21.79%. We have not yet got that monthly candle close above that $30,000 level. We're actually about 6% away currently from $30,000. And $30,000, if you've been watching the channel, is the most significant horizontal price point uh, on the chart currently. And the point that we do need to break this monthly candle above uh, for higher time frame confirmation of this trend. But if we do not, this is going to be delayed for another four weeks and we're still going to be challenging that same resistance. We'll elaborate on that in just a moment. So we are still quite a ways off that monthly close above 30,000, but we are coming quite close to it at the same time. Volume is down 12.19% and we're looking at liquidations down 28% as we have seen a little bit of stagnation in the price action on the shorter time frame. We haven't seen too much go on. We had a strong liquidation wick that accounted for most of those liquidations ever since then quite a slow move toward the downside again coming back to his chart later. Volatility 3.59 for the 30 and for the 60 we're looking at 3.14 both of which are steadily on the incline and as for those liquidations guys in the last 24 hours like I said a whole bunch of those longs got liquidated as we saw quite an aggressive trap above 29,000 pushing all the way back down to retest some of these lower supports. So quite an impressive move for Bitcoin over the last 24 hours. However, it wasn't sustained, and again, this twenty-eight to thirty thousand dollar resistance is prevailing and is showing its strength. So let's get into the DXY. We'll come back to Bitcoin. DXY has moved downwards, and if you've been watching the channel, you would know our target, our expected support, was this local low. We've come down, we've retested as local low, and this is quite an important thing, right? Because we have to apply this to our analysis today, particularly on the short-term time frame, as when the DXY is at support, the stock market is more likely to correct, the DXY is more likely to rally, and Bitcoin has a stronger correlation towards what the stock market does by about 70% correlation. So we're more likely to see Bitcoin actually come down if we do see the DXY rally from here and bounce from the support. Okay, looking at the DX on a harder time frame, we do see a descending channel formation. We do know this is a bullish correction. This is a bullish reversal pattern. Okay, if we do break from this downtrending resistance, we can expect a rally towards the upside to then retest this blue zone, this upper resistance at 103 to 103.5. Keep your eyes on that level as well as keep your eyes on the support. A loss of this support level is going to result 
in a strong rally for both Bitcoin and for the traditional markets. So keep your eyes on the level. But while we remain above it, it is going to be acting as quite a strong support and we could see corrections across the board. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. We have seen now the S&P 500 broke through a short term neckline and is currently now retesting a stronger neckline of resistance while the DXY is at support. Again, guys, if the DXY bounces here, this area is most likely going to become reject a rejection and we're going to see the price push back down. However, the DXY does not bounce in this range. We are going to see the S&P 500 break through this neckline and that will result in quite a strong rally upwards, potentially to retest 4,100 to 4,000, uh, 4,175 to 4,200. Keep your eyes on it, however, Resistance is resistance until it is not, and therefore we should consider this to be resistance. Looking at the Dow Jones, guys, similar thing going over here. We have seen bounces from this uptrending support line. We do expect this uptrend to continue as we are in a overall uptrend, um, unless this uptrending trend line does break. And again, for the short term, it is looking pretty decent, but the key levels we need to break above are going to be these local top points over here, particularly 30, uh, 34,000. 33,500 and 34,500. Until then, guys, do expect a slow, gradual climb with the rest of the markets. But again, it is going to be strongly determined by what the DXY does do over the next couple days. Let's go ahead, guys, and get into Bitcoin. And we're going to start with the short term. We're going to start with the daily charts. Then we'll move over into the four year cycle and then we'll come back to, you know, the hourly chart, the 30 minute chart and discuss exactly what's happening on the short term. So to apply any context, I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees and exclusive access to our Mega World promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that guys, BitGet is a non-KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. And to kind of get you guys on the same page before we talk about the four year cycle, we need to understand the significance of these current major supports you're seeing in the chart right now. These are a few major supports after we go back to this chart over here that we do need to make sure you understand before we discuss the four year cycle, before we discuss any higher time ranges. So, currently, what we are seeing over here is the price of retesting. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff over here. Uh, this upper resistance at 28 to 30,000. Now this resistance level is in fact, if we zoom out, the yearly low of our prior bull run, okay? This was basically our bull run. This is our bull run over here. Okay, we did have a introductory first leg up, but we found support on this uh, 28 to 30,000 on that first leg, okay? So the yearly low of our prior bull run was going to be the support range between 28 to 30,000. Now we do have validation from the VRPV, okay? If we go back like two weeks, we would have noticed this entire range between 25.2K to $28,000 according to the VIP, uh, VRP, VRPV visible range volume profile was completely empty, okay? Only now since we had consolidation above, uh, below 28K, we have now started to see some volume ranges pick up on the VRPV, but this was prior empty. What it suggested was an increase above 28 to 30,000 suggesting the next chunk of resistance after this low volume range which sat between 25.2K to 28K it was our resistance, indicating 28 to 30K was the resistance, and this still remains as a resistance. What we can see in the higher time frames is as soon as we push above 30,000, we have significant chunk of resistance until about 40,000, and that is when that VRPV starts to drop off again. You can see it's rising, it's rising, it's rising, and it starts to drop off again until about 48,000, okay? 
on the higher time frames. And this is another very key level, 48,000, which we'll come back and talk about when we look at the four year cycle. So looking at 30,000, looking at 40,000, looking at 48,000, those are going to be the next higher time frame macro resistance points. So we're gonna go ahead and draw some of these in really quickly just to help the visual diagram of the charts. Okay, so currently underneath 30,000, like I said, 30,000 is going to be the massive higher time frame trigger for a macro continuation upwards, and this macro continuation could facilitate the start and uh, the start slash development of the next bull run. We'll come talk about it in a second. However, guys, whilst we remain underneath the yearly low of the prior bull run cycle, we are currently within this major rejection zone and the probability of a rejection and pullback is still there. And I wanna drill this in guys, the bull run has not started yet, okay? We go to the four year cycle really quickly. We can see according to the prior cycles, the bull run has not technically started. There's a few things that we need to look for when we're looking for the start of the bull run and confirmation of the bull run. We'll come back to it when we do get into it, and specifically in today's video, but it is not quite on yet. What we have seen, however, is a bottom, okay, similar to the prior cycles. We have seen a bottom, okay. We saw a bullish, macro bullish reversal pattern stemming from the bottom. In this instance, we saw our falling wedge structure, okay. We saw the falling wedge structure develop out of the bear market resistance, the bear market resistance being this downtrending resistance here, okay. We saw a falling wedge structure develop out of the bear, uh, the bear market resistance, which indicated a bullish reversal out of the bear market. Okay, this, this falling wedge is decreasing volume, decreasing volatility, decreasing velocity, decreasing speed, and decreasing liquidity, all suggesting a bullish reversal if that occurs on the end of a strong downtrend, okay? It signifies a shift in the momentum. It signifies weakness in the downtrend, which will eventually result in a shift in the trend. And that is what we have seen. We have seen a strong reversal from this falling wedge. The measured move target was this local high, the first top. We saw that. From there, we saw a strong rejection. The rejection took us back down to retest 20 thousand to eighteen thousand three hundred major support again this is a major support level a major resistance level that we retested and also a major support level that we retested numerous numerous times between uh june to november we bounced and retested that level we then saw, saw another leg all the way up that resulted in a retest of 30 to 28,000. That is where we currently are. So if we do not get about 30 to 28,000, this current trend, this reversal structure, this uptrend on the smaller and daily time frame that we are in could still correct massively. Now, the probabilities of that is very low. Like I said, every correction that occurs above this point over here, 20, to 18,300 should be considered a healthy correction and still bullish on the higher time frames. We'll come back and explain why that is. However, guys, while we remain in 28 to 30,000, resistance is resistance until it is not, and therefore the probabilities and possibilities of a pullback on the higher time frame still remain. And that is what we're saying with such, um, you know, certainty, with such uh, passion that. 30,000 really is that key level we need to break above. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, you're still bearish. No, guys, no, 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 no. I bought at 18,000, I bought at 16,500, I bought at 19,200. If you've been following the channel, if you've been watching the videos, you would have done the same thing. You would be massively up on Bitcoin. However, I can hold a spot position that is at profit and still say that I expect the price to retrace, or at least there is a zone over here that is gonna be difficult to push through and the probability of rejection is higher. That doesn't make me bearish. That makes me unbiased to the facts of the chart. And by, a, by, by looking at a chart and being able to say, even the probabilities in this scenario goes against my current position, goes against my best interest, is in fact the definition of being unbiased, okay? So look at the charts where they are, do not confuse yourself. We'll come back to you in a second. But the four year cycle guys, really important. You did hear me talk about the 30,000 range and why it's so important. Well, let's take a look at why it's so important. If we look at prior cycles, the yearly lows of prior cycles are represented by a thick red lines. And look where it is this time. The yearly low is 30,000. Every single time, guys, we've closed a monthly candle above that yearly low, we have started a macro. We're talking about a monthly, a yearly long uptrend, a massive high, not a daily, not a weekly. We're talking about a monthly to yearly long uptrend, okay? That is what we expect again. 
However, not in the last cycle or the cycle before have we seen a high time frame rejection from that yearly low that results in a new loan, okay? So that is why I'm saying the probability of a rejection from this point that will result in brand new lows is very, very small. We haven't seen it before, and therefore the probabilities of it occurring is still quite low. It's possible, but for that to occur, we need to see a break below 20,000 to 18,300 to see that occur. So 30,000, incredibly significant, guys. If we take a look at what we need to see for a bull run to start, we have to take a look at our date ranges. So as you can see, I've mapped out this chart with some red zones, gray zones, and green zones. Our red zones represent our bear markets. Our gray zones represent the intermediate, the, you know, the middle phase between bull markets and bear markets, that, that consolidation phase, capitulation phase, whatever we want to call it. And of course, the green zones, which is, of course, our bull run. If you look at the bottom, we have our date ranges. We can see the average date range of this middle phase between the bull run and bear run is 16 bars to 17 bars. So we apply that same theory here, 17 bars. We do expect the bull run to start around about March, April, 2024. That is going to be the date for the bull run. Now I wanna show you two more things. If we look at when the bull run really starts to kick off, it is when it clears the local high of the first dead count bounce in the bear market. If we look at the 2013 scenario, that was this dotted line over here. Once we closed above that level right over here, that is when we really started to kick off that bull run. Look at the 2017-18 one. That first drop, the first dead cap bounce over here, when we cleared over that level right over here, that is when we really started to kick off that bull run. Aggressive volume came in. And that is what we expect to occur this time as well. The distance between 30,000, okay, and 48,000 is the gap that we need to close from the bull run to start and the bull run to really kick off in terms of volatility. And if we go back to this chart over here on that higher time frame, you can see, as I was talking about before, the VRPV does suggest that above 30,000, we have significant increasing resistance along the way, all the way up to around 40,000. You can see in the VRPV here, guys, you can see how it's increasing. We have increasing resistance as we push from 30 to 40,000. And that is why I said, even if we get a monthly candle close about 30,000, yes, it's gonna be very bullish. Yes, it's gonna be very, very good, but it's gonna take time, guys. It's going to take time to push from 30,000 to 40,000. When we get above 40,000, it will start to speed up as we enter a decreasing volume range where speed and velocity can increase and we need less volume to push through to 48,000. Above 48,000, we see it massively drops down again. So the distance from 30,000 to 40,000 is going to be quite a challenging move to make and it will take some time to push through guys. It will not be one month, it won't be two months. If we look at the four year cycle, it doesn't even anticipate the bull run to really cook off until March 2024 to April 2024. So how did I come to this date range besides just the date ranges over here? If we take a look at the Ichimoku cloud on the higher time frame, and we use the, um, if we go ahead and get everything off except that baseline, you can see guys, every single time we close above that monthly candle on the baseline. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these lines out of here. Every single time we close a monthly candle above that baseline, it signifies a macro shift in direction and momentum of the trend. You can see over here, monthly candle close above the baseline. It occurred, we went into a macro uptrend. You can see again over here, monthly candle close above the baseline, macro uptrend. That was 16 bars, that was 17 bars from the bottom. If we take an average, we're looking at 16.5. That takes us to mid-March, April for the next close above that Ichimoku cloud and continuation upwards, guys. So that is a four-year cycle summed up right over there. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you found it very beneficial. But of course, there are a few different indicators we're looking at on that chart to really pinpoint when the bull run will start, but different phases of the bull run too. There's phases of the bull run where it's slower and less volatility. There's phases of the bull run where we get those blow off tops. The bull run will start early and it will be developing above 30,000, but do not expect a blow off top. Do not expect mass hysteria and mass hype to enter the market until we start clearing this dotted line and until we get past around this date range, okay? Let's look at the high time frames. How are we looking from a technical standpoint? Looking pretty good, guys. 50 EMA, purple line, okay? 50, 200, and 300 moving average. We're above all of those on the weekly chart. That is looking very, very good. 
Again, guys, looking at the Marco Cypher 8, we are above our small time frame mirrors. And again, that 15 mate looking very, very good here. Looking like we are developing some strength and we're pushing away from resuming average, indicating some volatility and strength of our uptrend is developing. Looking at our Gaussian channel, guys, there are still a few warning signs on the Gaussian channel and the boiling of bands, which I do want to bring up today. So let's go ahead and take a look. The Gaussian channel, guys, we are retesting that midline. Now, I don't want to say we've closed above it yet because our prior weekly, we closed just underneath it. We closed literally just underneath it. And our current weekly, we've opened above it, but we could still close below it. And that midline is a very important level on the chart because every single time we actually flip the midline, we end up going into a higher time frame uptrend that eventually breaks through the Gaussian channel and through the upper band of the Gaussian channel. You can see two instances over here, okay? Both instances resulted in a strong uptrend that continued for months. So breaking above this level over here would be a strong indication that is now support and that will give us the pressure and push above 30,000 that will continue to price upwards through 32 and into that 40 range over the next few months, okay? Now, however, we are currently testing that as resistance because we haven't closed above it yet. So it is still resistance. And as you would know already, guys, the midline of the Gaussian channel is one of the stronger resistances according to the Gaussian channel. And it is showing us strong confluence or confirmation that the $30,000 resistance, that resistance we are currently testing is a stronger resistance and it is not a resistance we should be taking lightly and it's not a resistance we should be saying we're going to smash through immediately no resistance no problems it is something we have to be worried about and it's something we have to be looking at for rejection to develop from which we'll come back to in a second one more indicator i want to show you guys on high time frame is the boiling of bands as you can see guys we have actually approached the upper band of the boiling of bands again these are points of rejection, guys. This increases, this signifies massive volatility and massive speed of price action. The more we move in both the midline, it signifies increased positive volatility, positive price action, and a strong uptrend. We can travel along that upline for an extended period of time in the bull run, but we are not yet in a bull run, guys, and this does suggest rejection is likely. It's possible to see a rejection from here. It is very unlikely to see the price continue upwards on this board, uh, boiling band without a retracement. Where could the retracement take us? Again, we're looking for an uptrend to develop and uptrend continue. So we're not looking for a drop below that midline. So we're looking around 22,500 is going to be around the target. Now, if we look at 22,500, where is 22,500? Again, guys, 22,500 is sitting above this 20, uh, 20 to 18,300 major resistance, okay? major support, which is our bullish support. So that's a tick, that's okay, healthy trend. And again, 25.2K and 24.4K is going to be massive support. So on the higher time frame, we're looking at a monthly chart, we're not quite in a bull run, we still have to do some major resistance when we break through. On the daily, on the weekly, on the weekly in particular, again, the moving averages are looking really bullish, the charts are looking really good, there's absolutely no doubt about that. But there are a few indicators showing that this resistance is a significant resistance and we do need to break above it for the charts to really start looking amazing okay they're looking good but they're not looking amazing the risk of a pullback is still there let's talk about that short term now guys discuss the probabilities of a pullback and what could really happen so let's delete some of this and dive into the short term i think this video is going a little longer than anticipated so we'll end up closing it up in just a moment Looking at the short term, guys, we have a few different ranges here. This big red box is the 30 to 28K resistance. Now, I've said already, the two major points we're looking at here is this lower level, okay, and this upper level. If you're looking at two major points, we have number one, we have number two. These are the only two points of macro concern. The reason I say macro concern is with these two levels of support and resistance have the ability to shift the price on a higher time frame, downwards or upwards. If we do lose... This 26,500 level, we expect a move towards this support zone. Now, that is a macro shift, okay, because that is going to be a 7-ish percent move. On the flip side, we already talked about the probabilities. We've already talked about the significance of breaking over 30,000 and why it's important. And of course, I'm not going to go over it again, but now you know why 30,000 is also important. It is a higher time frame trigger. On the smaller time frame, if we look at the current ranges, we have been developing some decent supports, okay, within this range. This entire area here is a chop zone. It's very, very uh, sporadic. You can see the price factors are very choppy, okay? It is not the best time to be scalp trading too aggressively with too high leverage. Make sure, you, make sure if you do trade it, you are trading your ranges. Looking at the short term, we expect 
drops below the support as a result in continuations to lower supports, drop below support, continuation to lower support. Every support is a possible bounce point. As you can see, the price is currently retesting our current support, which is of course the POC level at 28,000. A loss of 28,000 will result in a continuation back below these levels. Do not expect a strong pullback until this local low is lost. If the local low is lost, expect continuations towards these lower supports and expect bounces at these supports until the support lows are lost once more. Until then, guys, this is going to be a support. However, since we are retesting the support from the downside, the probability of a breakdown from the support is higher at the moment. So do expect a short-term pullback, especially if 28,000 is lost. If you want to look for a continuation higher again, we are once more looking for pushes above these local highs. Look for a break over 28,600 for another push upwards to create new local highs. Once more, look at the higher time frame, look at the monthly. Nothing matters too much right now until the monthly candle closes. We have a massive video out about that in a few days. So very important guys, you keep your eyes on that and you look at that over the next couple of days. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. There's a few more things I wanna talk about. Um, I actually might squeeze out one more thing before we end the video, and that is going to be this daily chart, specifically the daily chart and the RSI, and then I'll end up the video. So let's just hang on for one more second. The RSI and the daily chart is still signifying a bearish divergence. Bearish divergence, decreasing momentum, increasing price. And we've said this for a very long time now. For us to get validation of breakouts, we need both momentum and price to break. Most clear, the most clear and most uh, comprehensive, a uh, detailed perspective I can give you right now is if you're looking for a break over 30,000, or if you're looking for any sort of move upwards into this 28 to 30,000 range, and you want confirmation that that move is not going to be a, a bull trap, and you want confirmation that move is going to be a strong move, look for a break of this RSI at the same time. Meaning if we push upwards and we break this RSI, that is going to give the momentum we need to potentially break through 30,000. If we do not see the RSI break this trend line, we should still be considering this is a weakening trend. This is a weakening trend unless the RSI breaks out and therefore the probability of a rejection from 28 to 30,000 remains. That is the most detailed, simplified example I can give you of the current market. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Sign up for Crypto Academy courses at gmail.com. 10 unit course. We teach you how to trade. We teach you technical analysis. We teach you market structures, market patterns, everything you know right over here. Don't miss out. Contact us via email down below. Join our Telegram for daily trades. And of course, sign up for get to support me and support the channel to help you guys do what I do daily. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.